Hi everybody, welcome to Elementary Classical Mechanics, the subject where observing the universe suggests new mathematical and computational approaches that can literally transform our way of modeling and predicting any aspect of the world. Welcome back to the third lecture of Chapter 10, where we're going to discuss the ideas of torque and angular momentum. Okay, so the setup for this, these ideas is we're in three dimension. We have our usual three dimensional coordinate system, i, j, k, x, y, z. And we have a particle of constant mass m. We have a position vector from the origin o that locates the particle. So the position vector is r, the usual notation. And the particle moves under the action of a force f. Then we define the torque about O. Sometimes it's called the moment of the force about O as R cross F, and we denote it by uppercase lambda. Okay, torque about O. That's important because the torque is, a, is not just about, it depends on the, the point about which is commuted, computed. By that, I mean the position vector is the key point here. Okay, so then we have this theorem that the torque is the time derivative of this quantity m, remember the constant mass m, we're assuming r cross v, where v is the velocity vector. Okay, this is a straightforward computation. d by dt of m r cross v, m is a constant. It, we can just pull it out. For the cross product, we have a product rule. And the cross product of any vector with itself is 0. And we're left with r cross m dv dt. But dv dt is the acceleration, so that's f, the force. OK, and that proves the theorem. Now, this quantity m r cross v which is r cross p, m is constant, we refer to this as the angular momentum about O for this particle of constant mass m. So if we rewrite this theorem 5, it says that torque is the time rate of change of angular momentum. That looks a lot like Newton's second law, where the force is the time rate of change of linear momentum. So you can guess that we have a conservation law. When there is no torque, torque equals 0, we have d by dt of the angular momentum equals 0. And the angular momentum, therefore, is constant when there is no torque about this particular point. That's very important. OK, let's look at an example. We've seen this example before. Now we're going to look at it, look at different aspects of the example. So a particle moves in the xy plane, and this is a position vector. We know that moves on an ellipse. The question is, compute the torque on the particle about the origin. Compute the angular momentum of the particle about the origin and show that the angular momentum is conserved. We already computed the force on this particle moving along this ellipse. Then all we need to compute is r cross f. That's easy because m and omega are constants. We can pull them out. We just have r cross r. So torque is 0. Now we've already computed the velocity. We get the momentum for free. We can compute the angular momentum using the formula for the cross product. And we get that it's m omega ab times k. 
Wait, what we, we asked to prove show that angular momentum is conserved. How does this show that it's conserved? It's conserved means it's constant in time. It doesn't change in time. And this is a constant angular momentum. It's a vector because angular momentum is a vector, but it is constant. It doesn't depend on time, although k doesn't depend on time, neither do m, omega, a, and b. Okay, good place to stop. And in the final lecture for chapter 10, you can see what I'm going to do. I'm going to talk about the problems at the end of this chapter. So, see you next time. Bye.